I'm Kate Costa with New Venture Mentor, and this is your weekly dose of entrepreneurship news. It was another busy week in the entrepreneurship world last week. First up, two studies released last week indicate that small businesses continue to inch along towards recovery. An Intuit study indicates that both revenue and employment at small businesses are growing, though that growth is slow and it will take another two years of growth at that level to get us back up to where we were before the recession. Another survey, this one from Shore Payroll, indicates that most small business owners are optimistic about the future. However, they still don't plan to hire any more workers in the near future. That survey showed that 64% of small business owners are optimistic about their business's prospects and 50% of them have experienced increased revenue growth. However, they say that they've also learned to be more efficient and increase their productivity so that revenue growth does not yet warrant new hires. One way that small business owners may be able to add to their revenue growth, according to a study by web.com, is to become mobile friendly. According to the study, 84% of small business owners who have a standalone mobile site for their business saw an increase in sales because of that site. Yet, 40% of the small business owners surveyed don't even have a traditional website, let alone a mobile one. Of the 60% that do have a website, only 14% also have a standalone mobile site, and another 26% have a mobile friendly site. Clearly, as with every other investment in small business, the lack of adoption likely has much to do with a lack of time and or money to commit to developing these sites. However, given the likelihood of revenue increase, it may be a good idea to get a quote from a development company and see if creating a mobile or at least mobile friendly website would be a good decision for your company. There was a flurry of response about a new book released by the Kauffman Foundation addressing female entrepreneurship, its rise, and how it's different from male entrepreneurship. One big difference, according to the book and a host of other studies, is financing. While women-owned businesses are growing, they're falling further behind male-owned businesses, and part of the reason for this is that women-owned businesses seem unwilling or unable to raise the outside capital that men do. Check out the infographic that's linked to below the video to take a closer look at the stats. Now, unfortunately, this study looks at data from 1997 through 2007, so we're already five years past and don't know what, if anything, has changed since, which is especially notable given the massive economic turmoil that we've all been experiencing over those last five years. However, that tends to be the way of the world when looking at statistics from most sources, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens in the future. Noting the challenges that women entrepreneurs face in raising outside capital for their companies, the book's authors give a few bits of advice for female founders of growth-oriented companies. They suggest developing your financial knowledge and skills, understanding the appropriate funding types for your particular company, being willing to put some skin in the game and invest cash of your own, keeping your eyes open for funding and support services that target specific groups, such as women, minorities, or companies in certain geographic areas, and being strategic with your networking to make sure you meet the right people and gain access to funding options that you can't reach without a personal introduction. Setting aside the fact that it's somewhat insulting to think you'd need to tell an entrepreneur, female or male, looking to raise financing that she needs to be financially literate and determine what type of financing to go after, the tips are helpful for entrepreneurs new to the outside financing game. Heading over to Capitol Hill, let's start with a quick update. President Obama signed the Export-Import Bank's reauthorization, so small businesses that depend on the bank's services can breathe a little easier. In other news, Senator Brown of Ohio has introduced the Business Incubator Promotion Act, hoping to provide federal grants for the creation of business incubation programs in areas with high unemployment. Supporters say that these incubators will drive small business growth and create jobs. However, there has been quite a bit of opposition from those who argue that the benefits of incubators have not been proven. Yes, jobs are created, they say, but those jobs are created by the small businesses, which would have done so with or without the incubation program. And the federal government should not be spending money on a model that has not yet demonstrated measurable results. What do you think about the proposed act? Should the government get involved in business incubation or not? And do you think incubators actually help create more jobs than the select businesses involved in the programs would have created anyway? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Another proposal that will most certainly stir debate is a U.S. Department of Labor plan that would allow entrepreneurs to continue to collect unemployment benefits while starting companies. 
Typically, citizens can only collect unemployment benefits if they are actively looking for employment. So an entrepreneur who's focused on building his or her own business, not on finding outside work, would not qualify. The new plan, however, would change that for those working on credible businesses. What a credible business is and how eligibility would be determined, I don't know. Additionally, since the Department of Labor sets overarching guidelines, but unemployment benefits are managed at the state level, the plan may or may not actually affect that many people. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Finally, remember to let the SEC know your thoughts on how they should implement the provisions of the JOBS Act related to securities by clicking the link below and leaving a public comment. And now, the Small Business Administration is also interested in hearing your thoughts on implementing the JOBS Act. For them, the provisions related to federal government contract bundling. So make sure to submit comments there as well. That's it for this week in entrepreneurship news. Remember to follow me on Twitter and subscribe to this channel for the latest small business news as well as tips, tricks, and tutorials to help your small business grow. Mm -hmm.